Well, that was a lot of work. Hey guys, so I've been thinking, you know, it's been quite a while since my last Barnes and Nobles trip. And three of the puzzles that I had picked up from there were from a brand that I know most of you were very interested in hearing my thoughts on. So I figured, you know what, what the heck, let's finally do this. I was hoping to do this one a lot sooner, but you know, life, right? But anyways, the brand that I am talking about is Pomegranate. And this particular puzzle is called Fairies. The artist is Michael Hake. I think I said that right, probably not. But anyways, it's 300 pieces and it's 24 by 18 inches when it's completed. Now, I don't typically pick up 300 count puzzles. I, I'm the type of puzzler who likes to pay for like the higher count puzzles because I feel like I get more puzzle time for my, for my money. But anyways, I'm getting off track here. For one, I love this vintage look to it. I love the colors. I like fairies too. I think they're really cute. So quite honestly, I'm really excited to work on this one. I feel like this is going to be some really good, quick fun. At least, you know, I'm, I'm hoping it's quick for me. Knowing me, it'd probably take me longer than someone who does 300 count puzzles normally would. But anyways, what I want to do here is compare this 300 count puzzle quality and experience to a 500 count puzzle from Pomegranate. And this one's called The Quest for Knowledge. And this one is also 24 by 18 inches when it's completed. So this is interesting. So you know you're going to be getting, you know, a different piece size here. But aside from that, I mean, I thought this image was really fun and interesting too. Not my typical kind of image, but it's very interesting. I love the colors. And, you know, now that I look, up, look at it, we still have quite a cute little town in the back here, which, you know, probably I'm there somewhere. Who knows? What I do know is that this guy here needs some serious help. I don't know what's going on there, but I do know the back of the box has some information about this image, but then again, I think there's still um, unknowns to it, like the artist, it's unknown as well. But anyways, aside from that, not only do I want to compare the 300 and the 500 count experience in Pomegranate, but, you know, when I was at Barnes & Noble's, I was like, you know what, man, I might as well pick up one of their 1,000 count puzzles and see what that's all about. And this one is called At the Japanese Garden. The artist is CJ Hurley, and this one is 25 by 20 inches when it's completed. So it's slightly bigger than the 300 and the 500 count set, which is interesting because again, we're gonna have another difference with piece size here as well, and overall, you know, quality and experience. So yeah, you know, I, I feel like this is gonna be an interesting, you know, comparison here. But aside from that, you know, we got ourselves another really beautiful image, really. Look at these colors. They're so vibrant. I love Japanese gardens. They're, you know, meant to be really relaxing, which is, you know, something I need more often than not. So yeah, you know, aside from getting all the goodness from completing these pretty amazing looking images, in these puzzles, I, as I said, you know, we're going to check out and see if there's any major differences in overall quality and experience with these three different puzzle counts. And you know what? You know, hopefully they're all good. I've heard a lot of great things about pomegranate from you guys. So, you know, I really got my hopes up here. But you know what, guys? As you can see, I got a lot of puzzles to put together. There's a lot of pieces here. So you know what? I better stop rambling and I finally better get started. All right, we got a lot to open up here. So let's first get started with the 300 count puzzle. Now, these all have plastic wrap on them. So let's get that off first. Uh, I really love how sturdy these boxes are. But anyways, let's get this opened up and let's see what the pieces are like. Oh, look at those big pieces. Not really seeing any puzzle dust in the bag, which is a good sign. Let's open this up. All right. Wow. I like how big these pieces are. That's fantastic. Oh, wow. And I love how these feel, too. Now, in terms of thickness, we have pretty decent one at that. 
Now, considering these are much bigger pieces, we have these tabs sticking out quite a bit. They don't feel very weak, which is good because just by looking at looking at it, you might think it is quite weak. But you know what? As long as you're not being a beast and you know you're being gentle, these aren't going to mess up on you very easily. I really do like the finish of these puzzle pieces as well. They don't really have that glossy coating. It almost seems like it's more on the matte side. And I have this facing the win you know, the window here, and I have a lot of light coming in. And look at that. I'm not really getting that much glare. I can I can see what's what's going on here pretty darn well. And in terms of the prints and the colors, I mean, we're dealing with pretty much exactly what's on the box image, which is very nice it's very sharp as well take a look at that that looks fantastic all right that's the 300 count let's open up the 500 and see what these are like all right i guess reference images are just not a thing with pomegranate puzzles but that seems to be the case with a lot of the fancier ones for some reason i mean not all fancy ones one thing i do notice so far here is this one does have quite a bit of puzzle dust to it yeah that's quite a bit of dust all right we got still the same thickness here as well the 0 0.08 and i have dust on my puzzle table but let's stop talking about the dust look at these colors i love this but as I look more at the box itself, I don't know, I almost feel like the colors on the box are a little bit more brighter, more sharper than the actual puzzle pieces. But I mean, still, it's pretty darn close. The strength is pretty darn good as well. I really like these. Oh, and the size is fantastic. And again, same gloss level or lack thereof. I mean, this is great. I like it a lot. All right, now let's move on to the 1,000 count puzzle and see what those pieces are all about. Oh, Jesus, this is a mess. I got so much going on on this table now, things are falling everywhere. So I'm going to do my best to keep myself organized here. But in terms of the 1,000 count, I don't know if you can see that in the bag there, but we have quite a bit of puzzle dust again. And I don't know, for some reason, I just the, putting them through my fingers, they, they feel weaker. But I don't know, I think we're going to have the same thickness here. Actually, it's 0 0.01 inch difference in terms of thickness, which is very interesting. The other ones were 0 0.08. Hmm. That's probably why I was able to kind of instantly feel a difference, even though it's 0 0.01 inches but i mean i don't know it, you could you could actually feel the difference i'm gonna be honest here guys i kind of feel like the color is a bit on the dull side compared to the actual box image here this this box image is like super sharp and bright i'm not really getting the same vibes on the actual pieces it kind of seems a bit on the blurry side these are the detail is not very sharp at least not as sharp as it looks on the on the box itself this is very interesting you see guys this is why we compare these things because you know it's Sometimes you don't expect to see a big difference between the piece counts with brands, but I mean, you know what? I'm more curious as well now how the hold is going to be, especially with this one, that it's slightly thinner, very ever so slightly thinner. I know that may not seem like a big difference, but it can make a difference with the whole puzzling experience. So you know what, guys? I got a lot of puzzling to do here. So we're going to start, as I said, with the 300 count, move on to the 500 count puzzle, and then we're going to finish with the 1000 count, and then figure out, I guess, which is going to be the better experience or the better value for your money here. So you know what, guys? Uh, let's move on. All right, so let's get started on the 300 count. Now, I originally wasn't planning on sorting this one because with all those muted colors, I didn't think it would be possible for this image. And as soon as I opened the box, I changed my mind and that's okay. But it was a simple one. We have edges, 
We have a tray with flowers, which now that I think about it was an interesting choice because that's the whole image. But anyways, fairies was next and the pile of yellow and orange pieces. And once that was quickly done, I went straight onto the edges. And whilst working on that, I was already thinking about what tray I was going to tackle next. And for some reason, I decided to take on the biggest pile, which was the flowers, which isn't my norm. And I immediately started to resort that pile by colors and textures. And now that I think about it, there was really nothing normal about my plan of attack with this puzzle. Maybe because it isn't my typical kind of puzzle image? I mean, heck, it isn't even my typical piece count. But anyways, it was nice to work on something different. And even though it was a small piece count, I felt like this image was absolutely perfect for it because it did give me a good challenge. Those flowers were a bit tricky at times, and once they were mostly done, it was just a case of filling in the blanks with all the little fairies and there's quite a number of them hiding in there. Overall, I did like the quality of this puzzle. The pieces felt great, it had a pretty good fit and hold. It was an enjoyable experience, a quick one too. This puzzle took me about an hour and 30 minutes to complete. And now that I think about it, don't speed puzzlers do 500 counts in less time than that? Well, never mind that. What matters at the end of the day is that it was fun. And I was happy to pop that last piece in because I knew it was time to step up to Pomegranate's 500 count puzzle. And I really do like 500 count puzzles. And I was really hoping for the same or, you know, an even better experience with this one. All right, I did that pretty darn quick, which is surprising really, because when I first looked at this image, I wasn't really sure how I was gonna go about sorting it. But once I had all the pieces, you know, print side up, that immediately kind of like helped me figure out how I was going to separate it because the colors just really stood out to me. And with that, of course, we have the first tray are the edge pieces. Second tray are greens. And of course, we're going to have some blues and whatnot because it's going to be from this area here where the town is. So that was pretty straightforward. The, the next few trays get a little tricky, though. This tray is mostly, I guess, the best way I can, can describe it is... This area, the white and the dark lines and stars and, and the moon, if it's going to be any of this stuff going on. For the next tray here, this tone gets, they look similar, but this is more on the white side. This is more on the yellowy side. So I'm guessing it's going to be any of these pieces that are part of the sun or any of these on the other side of the image. Maybe, I don't know. The next tray, we're getting more yellow. So I'm thinking it could be this guy's clothing, some of this area here, and maybe more parts of the sun in there. I mean, I don't know. I'm guessing, right? Anyways, next tray, we're getting more into like the orangey area. So that's going to be around here and maybe some of this as well. And then it leads into the tray with the pinks and the purpley. So yeah, it's going to be all this area here. And then this tray, I know there's two pieces. I don't know why I did that. I don't know. I think this is part of his clothes and and the flowers. You know what? Let's just leave them in there. That's okay. But yeah, pretty straightforward. Did it in like about 15 minutes. So not bad. All right. I'm feeling good about this so far. So you know what? Let's let's keep moving on. Overall, the good feelings were abundant with this one. Piecing the edges was fun and straightforward, as well as the little town I was staying in far in the background. Oh man, I could really use another one of those right now. Mm. But anyways, at that point, I was already a big fan of this experience. The piece size was fantastic, the colors were bold, and that hold made me happy. I was very much enjoying putting this together. It did start to get challenging once I moved on to the sunny area. I had to line up the pieces according to how the lines, you know, lined up, if you get what I'm saying. And after that was done, I pieced together that poor man and then moved on to that pinky cosmic sky. That part was fairly simple, but then it got tricky again once I had to finish the rest of the starry sky. And since I was so close to the end at this point, I resorted those pieces by shape and by also grouping them from lightest to darkest. And that helped me to get that final piece in what I feel was good timing considering how challenging some of these areas were. 
This puzzle took me about two and a half hours to complete. Unfortunately, I was not able to help this poor man get out of whatever situation he was in, but I really do hope he figures things out. But anyways, after I left him behind, I moved right on to the next and final pomegranate in my possession. And most annoyingly, it was one of those situations where you think your plan is going to be great, then you take a good look at that pile, and then you're like, oh, what? All right, that sorting was a little bit more challenging than I expected, but here's what I did. Of course, we have our edge pieces. Um, I'm, as for the rest of this, I'm gonna do my best to describe what I've done, you know, as best I can. But anyways, these pieces had whites in them. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. If I saw white in the piece, it went in here, because I figured, you know what? That's probably gonna be obviously any of these flowers here. So, yeah. This one is, I believe, the sky, but this is kind of like that light bluey gray. So it's probably the mountains and some of this area up here. So there's going to be details with like the leaves and whatnot. This tray again, um, this is a hodgepodge of things. We have more of the light blue. And then we also have things which I believed were like the, the blue with the green trees in there. You know, like a darker blues, um, lighter blues. This here are pieces for the water section here, I believe. This little pile is anything with yellows. So I know it's gonna be any of these pieces here from that section of the puzzle. This tray is, we got a lot going on here. What I did for this one was anything that had like the buildings, we have the path, the bridge, we have these little statue thingy looking stuff here. So. Yeah, that, that's that one. That's gonna need resorting. This tray, I did, you know, it has a lot of greens here, but they're like solid green. So we have like the light green area, the darker green, and then I think I threw in some tree trunks as well in that little pile. And then as for the last tray here, we have more of the greens, but this is more of the, the detailed green. So it's gonna be any of these pieces here with all that texture going on and, and you know, stuff like that. So, so yeah, that's what I, I think I did. As I said, there's gonna most likely be resorting throughout the entire completion process. And yeah, we'll see. I'm a little intimidated by it because this seems like it's gonna be really difficult now that I'm, you know, got more of a feel of what these pieces are all about, but we'll see, right? But anyways, let's continue. And unfortunately, I was right about that feeling, but we'll get more into that later. A number of you actually watched me get started with the edges on my last live, which I must say, I'm very much enjoying the lives. It's been a lot of fun chatting with you guys, and it's something that I'd like to do more regularly. I just gotta get, you know, more settled into my new work schedule and routine, but please stay tuned for more updates about this. And feel free to give me any feedback about the lives. Are there any, you know, certain things you'd like me to talk more about? Do you want me to actually puzzle more during the lives? I know I haven't puzzled as much as I planned, but you know, I get so caught up just chatting and I forget that I have a puzzle set right next to me. But anyways, let's get back into what I'm supposed to be talking about in this video. So, whilst working on the edges, I did feel like the puzzle, you know, already had a pretty good hold to it. But I did notice that wasn't the case for the whole puzzle. As I moved on to the flowers, the trees, the water, that hateful grassy area, I did come across a number of sections that did have a pretty good hold, but others not so much. It almost seemed crumbly at times, which I thought was very interesting. And the print in certain areas just seemed dull, blurry, just, just not good. And I don't know if it was just the nature of the actual painting, I, I doubt it, but I don't know. But what I do know was that it made certain areas even more challenging to figure out. I got stuck a number of times and I was having moments of frustration. I didn't expect that. Was this actually going to take me centuries to complete? Because it sure felt like it had already taken me centuries to get to where I was at that point. Alright, I 
I've been working on this since I got home from work and I kind of feel like I haven't gotten much done. And I have to say, I'm feeling like this is, I don't know, I'm really struggling with this. I mean, I guess it's not surprising considering, you know, the way the details are in all these pieces, but this is what I have done so far. And as I said, considering how long I've spent on this, I feel like I, I should be further along. And, you know, especially considering how, to me, I thought this image would be pretty simple to piece together, but I don't know, man. But anyways, I have all these greens that I have to get through. I still have a full tray full of pieces for like the path, the buildings and whatnot. And then I have like, oh geez, as I said, I have these trays here that I have been picked out already. So, you know, to, you know, to be honest, out of the eight trays, I have four trays that have pieces in them and two that are very full. So, you know, I, I guess we're getting somewhere. Now that I think about it, maybe if I wasn't leaving so many messes on the table, I'm sure you've seen in the video already, um, I can't help but make messes, but you know what? Uh, that's just how I work. But I think the trick here is I have to be more organized and maybe organized by shape and, and whatnot, and we'll see, maybe I can push through this a little quicker. But anyways, enough talk, let's continue on with this. After that, I did try to stay a little bit more organized, you know, like try to keep a more organized mess. And I pushed on, even through moments of frustration and feeling like it never end. It happens to all of us puzzlers, and that's okay. Take your breaks, grab some reinforcements, put on your favorite music or background noise, and try to push forward. Especially after already putting so much time into it, might as well get it done, right? At least that's my attitude. But anyways, as you get closer and closer to the end, the number of pieces in those piles will continue to get smaller and smaller, and it's much easier to go about using those puzzle tricks that can help you get certain areas quickly finished. Uh, sometimes I do wish I wasn't so lazy at times when it came to resorting because I feel like I could have gotten this done a lot sooner. But you know what? That's okay. Don't feel bad if you get lazy to do things every now and then, it's normal. But anyways, this is all we've got left here, which is fantastic because we are about done. So let's just finish this already. This puzzle took me about five hours to complete. I swear I felt way longer than that, but that's okay because I was finally able to cross that bridge and check to see if that little cottage in the background was vacant perhaps another little getaway to add to my collection. But anyways, with these three puzzles under my belt, what were my overall thoughts about pomegranate? Well, I have to say that was quite a lot of puzzling for this video, but overall, a pretty darn good experience. I have to say with pomegranate, I absolutely love the packaging. I mean, that's a nice solid box that you're getting. It's such a very nice presentation. I felt really fancy buying these. Now, one of the things, though, is that you don't get a poster with any of these puzzles. You get the box image, and that's it. Which, for the most part, the image on the box is a pretty good size. But if you're going for an image that has a lot of small detail and intricacies to it, you might struggle. And I have to say, one thing I, I really did know with all three of these is, you know, Pomegranate is one of those companies that kind of love their dust. You got a pretty good amount with each of these. But aside from the presentation and all that good stuff, let's let's talk about the pieces here. Now, one thing I absolutely loved was the variety of piece shapes. And even with the 300, you you got yourself at least six different shapes there. And the piece size, I mean, of course you're gonna get a much bigger piece size with the 300 count, but the 500 count I thought was pretty darn good. It was pretty darn big. As for the 1,000 count, you know, it's not a mini piece. It's kind of like your basic piece shape when it comes to 1,000 count puzzles. And with all three of them, I did find the overall fit to be okay. They all popped in really nicely. And in terms of, you know, the hold, which you know is a big deal to me. Overall, I felt like pomegranate in general has an okay hold. It wasn't perfect, you know, like the Mandy certified kind of hold. But you know, it's, it did its job for the most part. Though I have to know, I did have more issues with the 1000 count puzzle. That one did have instances of crumbliness to it. The hold was a bit lacking there at times. 
And they all survived the pickup test, but it was a different story for the storage test, especially for the 1000 count puzzle. And I'm not actually sure if that has anything to do with the thickness of the puzzle piece. Because I know when I did the thickness comparison early on, the 1000 count was slightly thinner than the 300 and the 500 count. And those had a much better hold than the 1000. So I don't know, is thickness, you know, part of the whole, you know, equation of a good hold? I'm not sure. Now, in regards to the print on these pieces, I felt like the ones that had the best print was the 300 and the 500 count puzzle. As for the 1000 count, I don't know. There was a lot of areas in that image that just seemed blurry to me. And some sections, the colors just look dull. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure if that had anything to do with the nature of the image, but when you look at the box, I mean, it looks crisp, it looks clear, the colors are like super bright. And on these pieces, I just, I just didn't get the same feel from it. It almost made me a little, you know, let me down a little bit at times because, you know, when you're shopping for puzzles, your, your first impression is that box image, you know, those colors that are popping to you. And when you come across the puzzle pieces themselves and you're looking at them and you're like, you know, well, this is kind of like not what I was expecting. I don't know, that might, that might seem a bit much and silly to some of you, but that's just me. That's how I am when I'm shopping for my puzzles. I, you know, you go in with the intention of, you know, this is what I'm getting. This is the image that I'm going to get. And if your puzzle pieces don't seem to translate the same way, well, it's kind of like, eh. But again, I don't know. That's just me. And another thing that I felt kind of turned me off with the 1000 count puzzle was that I was kind of, I was coming across some false fits. That was a little frustrating at times. But then again, who the, who likes false fits anyways? But anyways, out of, you know, all those positives and negatives, I have to say, my absolute favorite of the bunch was hands down the 500 count puzzle. To me, that was the best pomegranate experience. I love the piece size. I love how bright that print was and it was sharp. I didn't deal with false fits. The sections held on very well. It was a very well balanced experience. I'll put it, I'll put it that way. But you know, every puzzler is different. We all have our likes, dislikes, our pet peeves, things we don't care about and things like that. And that's what makes us all different and special. And at the end of the day, we all gravitate towards different puzzles anyways. Overall, I would recommend you try pomegranate puzzles, especially if it's an image that you absolutely love. You know, they're, they're still really good quality in the end. But again, this is my first experience I shall have more in the future and we'll see, maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe I'll absolutely hate it next time, who knows? But anyways, I'd be very curious to hear about your experiences with pomegranate puzzles. So please let me know down below. Is there a favorite piece count that you have? Are there certain things that you agree or disagree with me about these puzzles? Am I talking trash here? I mean, I don't know, let me know down below your thoughts. But anyways, guys, if you're looking for a place, you know, to share your own experiences with, you know, Pomegranate or any puzzle brand out there or anything puzzles really, and you're looking for some puzzle friends, I do have a community that you can join and I'm going to leave a link to that video down below so that you could look more into it. Now that I've completed these three puzzles, I have been saying that I'm going to start working on my next biggest challenge. And I am happy to say, I think, that I have started it finally. And my goodness, I don't know what I've gotten myself into. I don't know how long this is going to take me. But you know what? Deep down, I am excited about this new adventure. So if you're new here and you want to see what happens to me during that um, a monstrosity of a challenge, be sure that you're subscribed. But anyways, guys, as I said, I do need to get a move on on this beast of a puzzle because I've been working an hour and a half on it so far, and I don't think I've really done much. But I hope you are all doing well. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.